This video has been a long time coming, so today we're going to build an optimized monk. Finally. Hey fellow Game Masters, I'm Richard Quiner, and welcome back to the RPG Daily, your semi-daily dose of all things tabletop role-playing games, helping you build your world and master your game. Before we dive into this monk build, I want to make a disclaimer. There are many different ways to build every single class, every type of character, that you want in Dungeons and Dragons. This is just one way to build a monk that I found probably works pretty good, in my opinion, for the monk role. Building this monk, I wanted to focus on two main things, making it a good striker combat fighter and give it a lot of mobility to get it around the battlefield quickly. Those were my kind of two main things that I think make a monk great in D&D. As I go through this build, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Let's have a little conversation and discuss the monk subclasses and how this all works. Starting off with the monk races, we wanted to find something that gives a good dexterity bonus and potentially a good wisdom bonus. There are a lot of creatures or races that have a plus two dexterity modifier, and there's also quite a few that have a plus one wisdom on top of that, so there's quite a few you can take a pick from. Some options are the wood elf, the lightfoot halfling, humans, and variant humans. Variant humans are kind of a catch-all. They can do well in any class or subclass out there, in my opinion. But for me, I wanted to go something a little different, a little more interesting and unique, in my opinion. So I chose the Arakokra. If you're not familiar with the Arakokra, it, they are, they're bird people. They are lightweight avian humanoids. They usually have the body of a humanoid bird with wings. They're very lightweight, they're fast, they can move around, and they can fly. So why did I choose this Arakokra for this monk? Well. You get the plus two dexterity, which is great. You do get a plus one wisdom, which is also really great for this. But in addition to that, you get 50 feet of flying speed, which means you can zip around that battlefield really quick. Your on foot speed is a little slower, but the monk makes up for that as you level up. On top of that, you have talents, which means instead of bludgeoning damage from your unarmed attack, you're going to be dealing slashing damage. Diving into the ability scores of this class, I'm doing things a little differently. Normally I would say, using the array system, put the 15 on the highest, but I've kind of learned a little lesson. I've come to my senses a little bit and I'm gonna explain why. So first off, the 15, I'm actually gonna put that on wisdom. The 14 is going to dexterity, the 13 is going to constitution, the 12 to intelligence, the 10 to strength, and the eight to charisma. So why did I play this switcheroo if dexterity is the most important score for this class? Why would I make Wisdom the 15? It's because of the racial bonuses from the Arakokra. By adding a plus one to the 15, we get a 16 for Wisdom, which means the Wisdom modifier is a plus three. That's a pretty good deal. If we add a plus two to Dexterity, that also makes Dexterity a 16 from the 14, which also gives it a plus three modifier. Had I switched it around, the Dexterity would be at 17, and the Wisdom would only have been at 15, meaning I would have a plus two to wisdom and still only a plus three to dexterity, so I chose to even those out. 16 and 16 means a plus three and a plus three. Does that make sense? I kind of didn't think about that the last couple times. You could do this with a lot of different classes, similarly to get higher modifiers across the board. When looking at backgrounds, this one was kind of tough for me. I wanted something that potentially gave acrobatics and athletics, because those are the physical skills of the monk but there were others that were also important. If I were to open myself up to use the mythical Odysseys of Theros, there is the athlete background, which does give you athletics and acrobatics for your options. If I wanted to go through the older backgrounds that had been existing in the game for a lot longer, I would probably go with the urban bounty hunter. It lets me choose two out of four skills, and really all four of these skills are really useful for a monk to have. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and take the Urban Bounty Hunter because not everyone has access to the Mythic Odysseys of Theros source book, so I'm gonna stick with the simple earlier stuff. I'm going to be choosing Insight and Stealth as my skills from this background. Getting into the actual monk skills, you have a lot of options, but you'll see that my options are basically gonna pick the same four every time. The main monk skill options are Athletics, Acrobatics, History, Insight, Religion, and stealth. Since I went the urban bounty hunter route with my background and I already picked up insight and stealth, for my monk skills I'm going to pick athletics and acrobatics to give me a little more mobility and use physical skills in that sense. If I were to pick the athlete background from Mythical Odysseys, 
I would probably go ahead and choose Insight and Stealth from these options. So basically I end up with Athletics, Acrobatics, Insight, and Stealth for my Monk. I know this is kind of boring. You are free to choose whatever skills you want. Those would just be my picks. Equipment for a monk is pretty straightforward. There aren't a whole lot of options. First off, armor. You don't get any because you don't need any because you have unarmored defense. If you wear armor anyways, it has a negative impact on you, so don't worry about the armor. When it comes to weapons, though, you have a couple options. You have short sword or any simple weapon. The short sword is a decent weapon if you want to build a character that would make use of the defensive duelist feat and use a short sword, by all means take that one, but I'm going to go ahead and pick a simple weapon. The simple weapon I'm choosing is a spear. The spear gives me a bunch of bonuses that I would probably find very useful as a monk. First off, it is a simple weapon, so it can be used by a monk as a monk weapon. It deals 1d6 damage normally, and that is piercing damage, but on top of that it can also be thrown and it has the versatile attribute, which means if I use the spear with two hands, I can deal 1d8 piercing damage with the spear. I, I feel like having a nice simple weapon that deals that much damage and can be thrown, letting me be a little more ranged at times, is just perfect for this Aracopra monk. When we hit level 3, we have to go ahead and choose a monastic tradition. Now, I might say, give me the way of the open hand monk. I want to be the quintessential monk, but for this build, I'm doing things a little different. I'm going with the Drunken Master Monk. If you go back to about a month ago in my videos, maybe a little earlier than that, you'll find I do have breakdowns of this Drunken Master Monk, so I'm not going to go into all the details of how this subclass works, but that would be my choice. The main things I'm looking at with this, though, is the Drunken Technique, which allows me to, when I do Flurry of Blows, to then disengage from my enemies at no extra cost which is kind of nice. The redirected attacks make a great use and makes you feel more powerful being able to control the flow of combat from one enemy. If they strike you, you can redirect that to someone else if more people are close by you, which could happen as a monk. And on top of that, you have Drunkard's Luck and Intoxicated Fury later on, which just give you some crazy bonuses to your rolls and your mobility and usability around the field. That's kind of the basics of that. Now we're going to get into ability scores and feats. This is where everyone splits off and has disagreements of whether you use ability scores or feats. I kind of like to do a mix between the two, so that's what I'm going to present here. But let me know your feats and your ability score choices in the comments below also. You're going to have the chance to choose an ability score improvement or a feat at levels 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19. So at level 4, I'm going to keep things simple, and I'm just going to add plus 2 to my dexterity, making it an 18, which also gives me another modifier. So I have a plus 4 on my dexterity, which helps in attacks and armor class and everything else. Then at level 8, I'm going to do that again, getting my dexterity up to 20. If there's any items or if the DM gives me something that will give me more dexterity, I might redirect this ability score to a wisdom. But since I can't count on that for this build, I'm just going to give me two more making my dexterity a plus five. At level 12, and some might agree that this is a little late in the class, I would probably take the alert feat, gives me a plus five to my initiative and means I can't be surprised. At level 16, I would pick Savage Attacker. Now Savage Attacker lets me reroll my damage die once per turn. So if I hit somebody and I roll poorly using Savage Attacker, I can get a little more out of the dice. And at this level, I will be rolling quite a few more dice as I'll have multiple attacks. I can save it for the bad attack in the round or a flurry of blows, however I want to use it in my turn. At level 19, and this is a little late, but it will retroactively help you out. If you choose tough, it will give you a bonus to your health throughout and give you just a nice bigger bonus pool. HP for a monk, in my opinion, isn't the most important thing. Their tank is by not getting hit and moving around the battlefield and disengaging. That's how they avoid being damaged. But at the higher levels, you can never be too sure. So you might want to just take the tough feat to give you a little extra health. So a couple thoughts on this build that you might be wondering. I know I was wondering it as I was making it, but I justified it to myself in this way. First off, what about unarmored movement? Unarmored movement gives you a bonus to your walking speed, which is really good if you're not wearing armor. So an Aracocra naturally starts out with only 25 feet of movement, but walking movement, I should say. But with unarmored movement, that speed increases so they can move around the battlefield and keep up with their companions. The, the part that gets a little sketchy is unarmored movement also later on lets you walk on water, climb up vertical surfaces, this kind of thing, which if you're a flying creature, you don't need that necessarily. But hear me out. 
What if something happens to your wings or what if your wings get chopped off, which could happen, you could still use unarmored movement to get around. I like to say it's better to have it than to not have it. And if it does go to waste because I can fly, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I like the idea of being able to fly around. Looking at the ability scores, I put the strength pretty low. It's almost a dump stat. Now, why is that? And that's mainly because with an Arakokra, in my opinion, I can avoid a lot of the strength-based checks that might come into play with someone who has to stay on the ground. For example, climbing up a vertical surface like a cliff face, as a DM, I would call that a strength check on my party or an athletics check. By having an Arakokra who can fly, I can just fly up there and bypass that strength check. That's why for me, as an Arakokra, strength is not the most important skill to have. Obviously, Dexterity and Wisdom are, but I would rather put the numbers into Con to get my health up a little bit than put it into Strength to be able to lift heavier things. Those are kind of my thoughts on this Monk build. What do you think of it? It's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles to it. If I were just starting out, this is the build I would probably go with to try and just get into the game. Of course, as you play a Monk, your build will change drastically. If I were playing this monk, by the time I hit level 4, I may decide I would rather have a feat instead of an ability score improvement. Or at level 8, I might do the same, and things would change depending on the campaign and the situation and the story being told. So keep that in mind. Don't tie yourself into a build for your whole campaign. Let the build grow naturally through the adventure and see how you feel about it. Anyways, I've been Richard. Thanks for watching.